So although the idea that torque produces motion is very important, and it's really something that's discussed in much more detail in our, our AP course, if you choose to take that, um, at this point, we will be focusing on torques that are balanced. Okay, situations where an object doesn't move, and the reason it's not moving is because there are two or more torques that balance out, and, and one causes one type of rotation, and one causes a different type of rotation, the opposite, and so we end up with nothing happening. That's really the, the, the style of, of, of application that we'll use in our class. So if you have something like this, like with a fulcrum in the middle, and you have two forces pulling on, on two different sides, and you can think of it like the weights that we hung in the lab, the, um, the reason it's not rotating is because the red torque is trying to rotate this, um, this stick down and to the left, okay? That would be the, what's called the counterclockwise direction, the, the direction opposite to the way a clock goes. And if, if we look at just the blue side, this is trying to produce rotation the other way. It's trying to cause the stick to rotate in the clockwise direction, again, the way a clock goes. And so what happens is these two forces, even though they're both pulling down, because they're pulling down on opposite sides of the fulcrum, they, they can balance each other out. And it's not just how much force, it's also how much how much uh, distance is between the force and the center, the fulcrum. All right, and so we'll talk a lot about a, a force producing counterclockwise or clockwise torques. And the real idea is you, you just kind of want to see how the, the, um, the stick would tilt one way or the other. And what, what's happening here is that these two tilts are being balanced out by each other. All right, so, so what we can say, state is that all of the torques that are producing counterclockwise rotations are going to have to balance all the torques that are producing clockwise rotations. In the simple case, that just means that R times F on one side has to equal R times F on the other side. Remember, torque is R cross F. And so that's kind of the... The, the main idea that we'll use for a lot of our problems. We'll try to predict where should we place a certain amount of force or mass, how much force or mass is needed in order to get a system to balance. So some people within the lab got to the point where we predicted um, what, what we would see um, or, or how, how we could find the distances and the masses. And I want to, sh want to show you why what you got was right. So if we are talking about weights as our forces, then our weights are m times g. And so for force 1, it would be m1 times g, and for force 2, it would be m2 times g. But notice in this equation, the g's don't really matter. There's a g on both sides. And so we could rewrite this as r1 times m1 equals r2 times m2. And again, a lot of people were able to see this with a lab. It was really cool, uh, those people who, who got to this point. Um, the, um, the, uh, you might have used a D for R or an X or something like that, but, but you got the main, the main idea. Now, what's kind of neat about this formula is because we've got R's on both sides and we got M's on both sides, we're not like calculating a new value or something like that. Um, we can measure these in any units we want. So we don't actually have to worry about converting unless the two M's aren't in the same unit or the two R's aren't in the same unit. Let's, let's take a look at some examples. So here we have 10 newtons on the left, 20 newtons on the right. We're trying to figure out what, you know, what the position of the 20 newton object should be. So the idea is that the green box would tend to cause counterclockwise rotation, 
and the blue would be clockwise rotation. And so they would have to balance each other out. And so on the left, we would have 1 times 10 newtons. And on the right, we would have r times 20 newtons. And so we could do some algebra and see that r is 0.5. And this, again, is what a lot of people saw in the lab, that when you had twice as much mass or twice as much weight, that it was half the distance to the, uh, to the, um, the fulcrum. All right, let's take a look at this one. OK, so similar sort of situation, but here we don't know a mass, um, and we don't uh, we have things in centimeters, okay, but it's the same sort of pattern, okay. Yes, officially the R should be in meters. Yes, officially we should take four times ten and find our our forces, but but the pattern still holds true that if I take the distance on the left hand side, that's causing counterclockwise rotation, and even if I use the mass value, it's fine as long as I recognize that I'm going to end up with the mass value on the other side. So on the left, 30 times 4, and on the right, 20 times an unknown mass, and I get 6 kilograms. Now, I do usually keep my units in my work with these sorts of questions, just because I want to make sure I put the same type of units on both sides of the equation. I don't want to, I don't want to mess that up. All right, so this um, question instead has things in terms of a meter stick. So we're going to have to um, not just put the numbers that were given, but again, find the distance to the fulcrum. Find the distance to the center um, as, we're, as we're working our way through here. Also notice that <clears throat> we have a 600 gram mass and a 1 kilogram mass. And so we're going to have to make sure that we convert that, that uh, value of kilograms to grams, or you could do the, the grams to kilograms. Either way would be fine. All right, so getting things ready. The, the 600 gram mass is at the 80 centimeter mark, but I'm not going to put 80 into my work. I'm going to want to subtract and say that it is 30 centimeters away from the center. All right, let's go ahead and get things set up here. I don't know where to place the object on the left-hand side. And so I'm going to have an R or an X, some, something to represent distance, times my unknown 1,000 grams. And on the right-hand side, I have my known information. I've got 600 grams, that's 30 centimeters away. Do some math, and we find that R is 18 centimeters. Now, I'm not quite done. That means 18 centimeters to the left of this fulcrum. And so I've got to figure out, well, what would that be on the meter stick? What would the marking be? And so we would take 50 minus 18 and say that it's at the 32 centimeter mark. All right, so, oops, and I apologize for this <laughs> kind of goofiness uh, when this, when this <laughs> came up on my slides. Um, but why have the solutions been putting these sigma notations in there? Why couldn't we just say, you know, torque equals torque? Well, the problem is, is that sometimes you have more than one torque on each side. Like, look, look at this example. This is something from the past where we had multiple forces pulling on one side of an object. <clears throat> and remember how you had to sort of group together the forces. Well, we can't group together forces because the forces are going to be at different locations. But we are going to have to group together torques that are, are causing the same sort of rotation. OK, so let's take a look at what that means. So here I have an example where the two red masses are on the left hand side. They're not at the same point, okay, so their torques would be calculated differently, but they would both cause the meter stick to rotate in the counterclockwise direction. 
It would both make it fall down on the left hand side. And so the blue one has to be positioned so that it balances all of that, so that its torque completely takes care of two other torques, okay? And so on the left hand side, we would look at the 60 gram object being 50 centimeters away from the center. It's a meter stick, so it's 50, half, half the distance of the meter stick away. And then the 15 centimeter, uh, 15 gram object is 20 centimeters from that. So 50 minus 20 is 30 centimeters from the middle. Again, you gotta make sure you measure all your distances from the center. That's what matters, how close things are to the fulcrum. And then the other side, we're trying to figure out where to put the blue mass. So that's our unknown R. And so it, everything on the left has to balance R times 100. So notice I'm not combining together the two masses because they're not at the same location, but I am combining the two torques. This comes out to be 34.5 centimeters. So we could say 34. 4.5 centimeters from the center, or we could say it's at the 84.5 centimeter mark by adding 50.